Okay, I am perfectly capable of sitting back and listening to people and, you know, letting them talk, getting an idea of their personality, their biblical standpoint, how they deal with scripture and all that. But the way my mind works is that everything is always going through a biblical worldview filter. And quite honestly, I think that is the intent and the purpose behind becoming a born-again Christian, that the Lord is nurturing for himself a righteous nation, a people of an eternal standing with him as a brand new one, new mankind in Christ. And I also put in the dead in Yahweh because God has this thing about oneness unity and that's going to be what he calls that what paul or whoever the author of hebrews is in hebrews 12 let me go there and show you i think in my personal humble opinion everybody should read the book of hebrews at or listen to it which they have them free all over the internet and if you like looking at them while you're listening to audio. That's what I like. I like to hear it through my ear and my eye. The entire book of Hebrews is just, it is, <laughs> were there ever a book of a cornerstone to kind of put everything together as a nice little summation point? I think it's the masterpiece of Hebrews. And it's not that long. It's only 16 chapters. But if you look here in Hebrews 12, so 11, chapter 11 and chapter 12, I mean, oh my word, respect to the author, the real Kokodesh, and then the human implement of Hebrews, really. So if you start off here in verse 22, it says, but you're come unto Mount Zion, or Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. So you know that angels are called sons of God, right? Did you know that from Job 38? Now, of course, the bad ones went sour on God and rebelled against him, much like Korah, but in the angelic realm, that's a problem. But that doesn't mean that the good angels are not still tagged with that name, sons of God. And then, of course, you have born-again Christians that are sons of God through faith in Abraham, right? So he says, and to the general assembly, who's the general assembly? Well, if you backtrack through the previous chapter, Hebrews 11, he's going to sit there and tell you about all these heroes of the faith. And it's not just the notoriety of the heroes of the faith, but really it's the tagline or the title or however you want to phrase that. The general assembly, those are the dead in Yahweh. Those are all the believers that came through the tools that God had by a faith, whether it was animal blood or whatever, it was through faith in Yahweh before the cross was appropriated. And then, look, so you've got the dead in Yahweh, and you've got, what is this? The church of the firstborn. The church of the firstborn. So we're talking about all the people that are one together in Christ, in Yahweh. This one spirit, this one unity, this one new mankind that you see birthed. You know, we've talked about in Isaiah 66. We've talked about it in Isaiah 54.1. We've talked about it. It's quoted in Galatians 4, the Isaiah 54.1. These are good scriptures to check out. And then, of course, Revelation 12, 5, that, that one new mankind in Christ. So it's really, really, really important. That is what constitutes, via faith, this one new mankind in Christ, this Israel of God in, in belief, which are written in heaven, right? Your name is in heaven in this registry or registrar of that new body, that forever humanity. And to... God, the judge of all, into the spirits of just men made perfect, complete, born again, back in unity with Yahweh is what he's saying. And to Jesus, the mediator of all oh, a new covenant, not just a new covenant, the new covenant, the one. 
and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel, right? This progression forward, the blood, faith, the blood, faith, the blood, faith, and then you get to the Lamb of God. So anyhow, this is really, really, really important to understand who are those that are the children of Abraham. And so this is just a tiny smidgen. And then Galatians, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but Galatians 3, especially 26. Is it 26? Hold on, let me, let me just double check real quick here. Galatians, I also think that everybody should go through Galatians 3 and 4, like on a monthly basis. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. <laughs> know ye therefore that which are of faith the same are of the children of Abraham. So who is taken out or away from or is not a qualifier as a child of Abraham? Unbelievers, which you have complete and utter control as an individual, he says in verse 9, so they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. I mean, he just goes on and on and on in this. So we know that those who are in Christ are Abraham's children because of this promise of the Holy Spirit through what? Through faith. And that's Abraham and his seed, that's Jesus, were the promises made. Saith he not into seeds? He didn't say to many seeds. Right? Who are the many seeds? The DNA Jews? But of many. As of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So certain promises were made to Abraham and his seed, the Genesis 3.15 seed. Okay? Jesus. So he talks about this covenant. He goes into a bunch more information. He's explaining the purpose of the law, things that I don't want to get sidetracked on right now. For you are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. The law was there to just drive you to your need for Jesus Christ is what he's explaining here. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither a, a Jew nor Greek bond or free, slave or free, there is neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to that promise. You're that one new mankind in Christ forever. That's a big deal. That's huge. That was the goal. That was the point of life in reality, to get you from the temporal tabernacle walking around in your little body, right, full of sin, to get you over to the one new mankind in Christ, the eternal forever mankind that would represent Jesus Christ. So that's huge. So I once in a very blue moon, and I mean very blue moon, listened to, to Barry. And he said something that just kind of mm, got my heckles up. He's got a lot of people that listen to him. So he's talking about this. This prophetic stuff, and I, oh, the political stuff, it uh, kind of gets to me sometimes. But let's just listen to what he says, and we're gonna we're gonna show the sticking point of something really strange that he says, and he's very representative of the Gentile American Church. I don't I don't know that he takes a lot in with the Jewish stuff, but um, let's just listen. I'm 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 not gonna reference a whole lot the. Uh, prophecy from the rabbi that talked about which is just mind-blowing to me what he's talking about is some prophecy supposedly from back in the 90s where there was going to be this these two different messiahs that were within the congressional process of the political sphere in israel is what he's talking about that there was a rabbi in the 90s uh that prophesied that there would be two benjamins going against each other in uh, the final elections of the Israeli parliament and that uh, Messiah would would come on uh, Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets, which somebody commented nicely uh, to keep in mind it's a two-day. It begins at sundown. Uh, okay, let, let me just be very clear because I tried to be very, very clear with the language. So he is specifically saying that two Benjamins, so two humans, excuse me then, 
named Benjamin would be duking it out in the legislative process in the Knesset, which would kind of like trip or hearken the, the Messiah to come. So I just want to be careful about what I say he's saying. So I take the opportunity to clarify my words on that. But listen to what he's going to say here in a minute. Uh, tonight. So it's today, tomorrow. So this is a really important watch time, but I'm, I'm not going to reference that prophecy, which is another, I think, amazing uh, prophecy. And I also don't think it's important. I think it's important not to dismiss rabbis. I get this comment a lot. Well, how do we know? And they're not Christians. That Look, God's people are God's people. Well, hold on. I'm going to give Barry some points for being open to the possibility that God fulfills these days. And he's saying high watch time right now. I think a good portion of Christians or Jewish minded people are aware of the fact that God uses the feast of trumpets to do his will. Although Barry is very much also when you listen to him of the mindset that has been taught to us in the Gentile American church that it's all random which show me in the Bible where it says God's coming is random. He uses feast days. But anyhow, so I'll give, I'll give them points for that. I do think that we need to be careful about the sources that we're listening to. It doesn't mean don't listen to the rabbis. It means listen to the rabbis with a hefty amount of being careful. Okay. Because it doesn't necessarily mean that prophecy is being fulfilled. It could possibly be that human beings have a script that they're going by, okay? And they the, the Habbatist Jews have a way of trying to manufacture things to make it look like, oh, look, prophecy is being fulfilled, when really they're just setting up these human controlled aspects of something and going, see, see, look, that's prophecy, that's prophecy, so I think we need to be careful with the rabbis. But then this comment that he just said, God's people are God's people. Whoa, back the train up, Barry. Whoa, whoa. What do you mean God's people are God's people? Scripture from Galatians 3 and 4 and Romans 9, 10, and 11 is beyond clear that God's people are not DNA Jews who have been cut off and are in unbelief. Nothing that is in unbelief, whether you're Jew or Gentile, is in Christ. In order to be God's son, you have to be in the olive tree. You have to be in the new Israel. What's the new Israel? Jesus is the new Israel. Jesus is the new family tree of genealogy. And we've done so many videos talking about that. So let's just back it up for a second because I'm a, I'm a, bulldog when it comes to core doctrine. We're not just scooping up the nation of Israel and going, okay, Bubby, you're in because you have Jewish DNA. God doesn't care what your DNA is. God only cares that you've experienced the rebirth, getting the Holy Spirit into your temple, completing you, making, making our spirits perfect. Like we just talked about in Hebrews, right? If you haven't done that, you're on your way to hell to pay for your own sins. It doesn't matter if you live in a land called Israel. It doesn't matter. You have to be in the God of Israel, which is Jesus. Jesus is a Jew. Let's listen. Yes, rabbis. I get this comment a lot. Well, how do we know? And they're not Christians. That Look, God's people are God's people. Um, we can, we can, we can be at odds. We can disagree. And obviously we completely disagree on the Messiah. One thinks that, that, that he's coming and we believe that Jesus is here. Uh, it does not change the fact that the Lord has a great love for his people. We are the Gentiles. So I, okay. Yes. God loves people. He made them. People are God's idea, but God does not love error. God does not love deception. God does not love a group of people purporting to be his chosen people 
who were cut off in unbelief and can come back at any moment in time. They just have to bow to Jesus like everybody else on planet Earth who's coming to Jesus. You got to bow. You don't get a free way in. And Paul said, not all of Israel is Israel. I think what he's doing is a major disservice, and it's the Zionist shilling that I can't stand. I don't recognize authority and unbelievers. I don't care what land you live in. You have to be an unbeliever. And it's not some um, unimportant issue. It is the issue, right? Thank you for watching.